So if you guys have been around the studio for a while, or if you guys watched my last YouTube video, you will know that when I moved into this new studio, that I encountered a problem that I did not necessarily have before, and that was noise pollution. Whether it was the reverberations because of the materials I chose to use to construct the room, or if it was the noise coming in from the rest of the house, because there is not a door that separates this room from the entirety of the house. So I wanna take you guys behind the scenes and talk to you a little bit about a DIY project that I did last week, and that was the construction construction of a barn door, but more importantly, a barn door that was acoustically friendly and kept my pillars of Scandinavian interior design to the best of their abilities throughout the entire design. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the world of Scandinavian interior design gets a little bit convoluted when the room you're going to be designing functions as a YouTube studio or any place you're going to do any type of audio recording. Barn doors in general are not acoustically friendly. And we know that our three main pillars of Scandinavian interior design are simplicity, functionality, and minimalism. Now functionality when it comes to this is easy to come by. It's easy to create a barn door that's functional. However, simplicity and minimalism, which kind of go hand in hand, are not so much the case when you are doing a construction that is acoustically friendly. So I want you guys to keep that in mind if you are die hard by pillars, that this may not be the project for you. Now let's talk about this door. From the main view of the door, it does encase all those pillars of Scandinavian interior design. It has a nice simple construction and the color schemes and everything which we will get into are very simplistic when it comes to the nature of the room. Where this door gets a little bit more intricate is the back of the door. There's a lot of hurdles that had to be addressed with respect to how much sound was getting through the door when I first constructed it with these pictures right here, and then kind of the door shape as well and how I had to mount the door, how much space was left behind it so that noise was getting in, and even just the size of the door overall with respect to how the trim is set up in the room and what I wanted to be visible, just some of the things that I've had to do to make it more functional when it comes to recording and how I add things and take them away. So starting with the outside of the door, I approached it the same way I approached my room. Now I talk to you guys about color palettes all the time when it comes to any type of design and trying to keep it minimal as possible. And we are talking about the paint names today. There's a lot of habits when I talk about these paints and give you guys the names and then there's questions in the comments and I'm like, did you listen? Anyway, so these are the color palettes that I use. I don't try to do a guessing game. I simply go to the store, pick up swatches that I like, and see what kind of fits my inspiration and my design. Now the top paint up here is called Carbonized by Shore and Williams. That's the paint that you're seeing behind me. It's on the walls and everything like that. And this bottom paint is the paint that I chose for the door color. Now this room in general is pretty dark. And although I have a lot of natural light, I didn't want to make it even darker by having that door be the same color as the wall. And I really didn't have enough money to buy a premium oak wood to fit into that aspect. I guess I don't want to spend that much money. So I didn't want to, I wasn't able to complement the oak accents of the room, but I wanted to go a little bit lighter. So I chose that bottom color on the palette and just kept it in that same color line. With respect to the metallic elements to the door, again, we talk about our naturals and metallics. Those are all together. I chose to get some simple barn door materials and hardware from Amazon and I simply spray painted them gold. They were black at first, I spray painted them gold and it fits the same gold color of the picture frames in the back, again, tying in that color palette, keeping it simplistic and not making it really like extra loud when it comes to the actual design. Now the back is where I had a little bit of fun and I was told that this wasn't going to work by the Lowe's associate and I didn't listen to him because I knew it would work. And I'm gonna talk to you guys about how we insulated this door and soundproofed it. Now, I actually went out and bought what's called safe and sound insulation. I will again link this in the description down below. And I simply put in-wall insulation, which is soundproof and fire resistant, behind the door where I had enough, there was a gap in the construction and I simply laid it in the middle. So that was gonna absorb most of the sound. Again, the way this door is constructed is that there's two long pieces of wood on the side and then you have two thin pieces on the end to give it that look. And then all you do is just lay planks in the middle, which leaves a gap because you have 
two pieces of wood on the outside, but in the middle, it's just those planks that you go down through the center. That's where I laid that insulation. Now, to secure this insulation in place, I wanted to use something that I knew was sound absorbing as well. And so I chose to go with foam panels, which were like $8 a pack, and I think I bought four of them to secure that insulation that's in the middle. Now, I only went through probably not even half a bag of the insulation. I think I went through maybe three, a fourth of the bag. So there's three fourths of that bag left, which I can use for something else to create acoustic panels or anything of the sort like that. I ended up using this pack of fasteners, um, which you'll be able to find in the description down below. This is for something called Curdy or Ditra. This is when you put, it's a waterproofing insulation that you will put normally in tiles, but you can use these brackets to secure it to the walls or anything like that before you, you know, do your mortar application. And so I use these fasteners to basically be able to screw the foam panels on without breaking them. Now this kept them in place securely. Now the thing about these foam panels is that because they are flexible, they bulged out in the center, which is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It's a good thing because it does secure the gap at the top very, very well. And it does absorb a lot of that sound and it makes sure that the door is flush. However, what I don't like about it is that I have to pull the door out to move it, which is fine. I'm creating something that's functional for the purposes. I can deal without the pretty aesthetics and functionality of the room because again, this is a work room. So I'm keeping my expectations realistic, especially with respect to a DIY project when I didn't order a $700 acoustic barn door. What I can do differently though, is I can get a piece of cement board and actually with some weight or somebody helping me make that back a little bit flat, even keeping the foam panels there. And that will allow it to move a little bit better, still keep that gap closed, which is what I'm going for. And again, I'll be able to actually secure it with a wall fastener because I have tile floors. I can't use a door guide. So I'll be able to secure it with a wall guide and keep the door functioning smoothly. And on a final note with gap reduction, there was one more thing that I did to again, increase the soundproofing of this bar door. And that was using air conditioner foam on the side to close the gap between the door and the wall. Now this is important because I don't have a wall that this door sits flush next to and my walls are not square. So what this allows me to do is simply have enough foam where I can push the door up and it will just follow that unsquare edge or cover the gap in general. Now this was a cheap option just to stop sound from leaking through. In addition to the bottom, I didn't use air conditioning foam because there's such a huge gap and I haven't bought a door sweep yet, which will probably be the better option going forward once I remove this foam. But I had some of those extra foam panels laying around. So I simply stick those under the door and add some towels at the bottom when I'm ready to record, which completely isolates me from the house, allows me to either play PS4 and talk on live without people hearing my family yelling and screaming about whatever my family wants to yell and scream about or it allows me to record like I am now. So overall, I think this project was really a success. It was a very simple DIY project and it really did cut down a lot of the noise. They are upstairs listening to the TV at around 31 decibels right now. The only thing they can't do in the house is move because they're right above me but it solved a problem where it allowed me to have a more friendly work environment, having to work from home. And I think that's something that a lot of people are really going to be encountering, whether you have a YouTube career or if Miss Rona has you working at home and you're not used to working with your family or any of the intricacies of sound. With that said, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications if you have not. This is not necessarily a interior design or a DIY channel, this is specific specifically focusing on photography and filmmaking, but it's also a lifestyle channel and I'm trying to incorporate more videos through that. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.